in the fish bowl. Um, today I'm going to be doing some spinning. Hang on a second. Tilt this down just a bit because I had the wheel in but then I moved it. Um, so you are watching from my mobile phone today because this morning my Surface Pro will not turn on. It is being a terrorist. It's, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I've put a, a message out to Surface Pro to find out if there's a fix. If there's not, I'm really sad. I love my Surface Pro so much. So much I love my Surface Pro. Um, so we're going to continue spinning our bat. Um, that we start, well, that we started, God knows when, how long ago did I start that bat? But we're going to, we're going to keep going because it's nearly done. It's, I reckon that if we do a good thing today, it will finish. Hey Vicky, how are you going? Um, so today's prizes will include some blinglets. There we go. There we go. The blinglets and peacock. Sorry, it's a bit washed out. It's medium. Sorry, there's a light right here because it's a bit gloomy and overcast today. Um, and also a green notions case. Um, so, good morning, Chantel. It still says waiting. I don't know what that means. Also, I'll have a one of a kind yarn that is unnamed. It's probably not quite as bright and as green as it says. Hang on, we'll see if we can see. Oh, there we go. That's better, a bit closer. It's a bit blurry, but the colors are a bit more accurate. Anyway, so we've got these prizes to give away, but we are going to be running the entire stream from my phone. It is uh, connected to a battery power so that it, it can survive, so that it can totally survive the hour and a half, hopefully. Um, I forgot to bring a book in today to discuss a book. Um, so if you guys have a favourite like what is the absolute go-to book that you go to for your resource for your craft is it a, a stitch dictionary that you love or is it something else so if you let me know um vicky vicky maybe try and refresh your screen um i think everyone else seems to be going pretty well okay if you can hear me that is um i just realized i printed a sign to stick on my door that said i would be filming youtube for the next hour and a half and i actually forgot to stick it up so, you guys can look at Pretty Yarn over here and drool at it while I nick off and quickly put the sign out. So I'll be back in one second. Well, it won't be a second. Too long it wasn't too long was it right did I miss any messages oh stop that wheel of doom okay so I have coffee I have water I have all the stuff um, I've got a spinning wheel so I should probably use it right so how's your week been I'm just gonna see if um, okay yep I, I did miss a couple of messages so Linda Greaves says hers was all good and Vicky's got her sorted out. So glad to hear that, Vicky. Um, so yesterday I had a day out of the office. I went um, to a, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it would be like a business kind of seminar thing. It's not normally my cup of tea, but Gary Vaynerchuk flew to Australia for it. So I thought, I'm a bit of a get hardcore Gary fan, so I went, you know what, I'm going. I'm gonna go and check this out. And Gary Vaynerchuk's thing was amazing. Like he is such an awesome live speaker. He's very passionate and no nonsense, and I love that. But uh, some, some of the other speakers, I was just like, oh my God, why am I sitting here? Because it was, one of them, I'm not kidding, felt like, a two hour infomercial, two hour live infomercial on why we should spend thousands of dollars to get his training products to, you know, build our businesses and what have you. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it was just, I don't know. And like, I honestly thought no one's going to buy this. But right at the end, he was like, 
okay, when I count to five, so he obviously knows his audience. So, um, you know, there's only going to be like 75 of these things available here and you know, I, I'm only going to have 50 available in Sydney, so you guys have got more. And it was such a hard sales pitch, and I hate hard sales. Um, but I'm not kidding. The second he set a price, there was a lady a couple of rows in front of me, and she literally got up and ran down the back to sign up. And I was just like, oh, my Lord. Okay, so, you know, it works on some people. And if it works on, say, 10 people, his, his package was, I think, four grand. So, you know, 10 people, that's 40 grand straight up. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. I'm just not interested in what he's selling. That's all. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm so sorry about only having one screen today. I don't know if that'll actually improve your quality. It probably will uh, because, you know, it's only one video signal coming through the same amount of Wi-Fi and what have you. Um, but the advantage of doing it this way is I can see how many people there are currently on as well as how many thumbs ups there are. Thumbs ups there are. That's, that's, that's properly not English, isn't it? There's are. Anyway, so I'm a bit frazzled this morning because of my laptop. I'm like hoping that having it off for like, you know, a couple of hours will actually uh, fix it up. Um, um, so hopeful it's the only laptop I've got so um, otherwise I'm, oh, I don't really want to buy a new laptop honestly I love my laptop so much um, you're just fascinated with my spinning I love spinning and I love it um, so much especially it sounds ridiculous having a sore leg and loving spinning but on these Marge craft wheels they're so gentle on your body that you don't like I do notice it but it's not painful. Does that make sense? Like, um, I think it's because I'm so sensitive that I notice it. Um, hi Tara, how are you going? So I will finish off this little piece here and I'll show the prizes again, what we've got to, for today. Um, the fish bowl is feeling a bit warm today. The aircon should be on. Um, I've just realized the door's open, so it's probably just being sucked straight out. So, although if the aircon's not blowing as well as usual, then I probably need the door open so I don't suffocate and die of carbon, is it carbon monoxide poisoning when that happens? Don't know. So some of you noticed last night that I was on um, an Instagram live and a friend of mine down in Sydney, or is he a friend or an acquaintance? I don't know. Anyway, down in Sydney, he said that, um, that cause he was trying out some of the new features of Instagram live where you can, like, you know, like on Instagram Live, if I was like, um, hey Tara, do you want to join this chat? And it would literally split the screen. I'd be at the top, Tara would be at the bottom, we'd be able to live chat, and then both of our followers could join in the conversation. And that was pretty cool, but I don't think Chopper realized it invited everyone's followers to whoever was chatting. And so, because it was new, it's a new feature, and not heaps of people have used it, and I don't think he even knew much about it at all. And he was having some fun with it, which was awesome because I hadn't used it. I knew it existed, but I hadn't actually used it. So that was a bit of fun. So it was good seeing some familiar names um, popping in. Um, I'm going to be trying very hard to put a bit more video content out on Instagram and on Facebook. Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. Just to try and, you know be everywhere because <laughs> I want to take over the world um, so is the quality okay for you guys good morning Tammy how are you going I'm just a bit nervous because you know everything's wrong and nothing's how it should be and I always get extra stressed out I should be used to it by now shouldn't I because isn't that like par for the course like nothing ever goes how it's supposed to go with these live streams um, so yeah, it just seems to be par for the course at the moment, um, which frustrates me, frustrates me no end. Um, I thank you, Tara, for letting me know. I appreciate that. Um, don't stress your among friends. Thank you, Michelle. I always stress because I try to make it as enjoyable as possible for you because like, I love the live streams. You guys know I love the live streams. Um, but I often feel guilty about taking up so much of your time and um, 
And I know that you guys, you know, you, you're fine with it. And everyone's happy about it. Because if you weren't, you'd literally click away. And I totally get that. Um, but, oh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Make a game. Place your bets on what will happen next week. Oh, my gosh, yes. That would be hilarious. Let, no, let's not do that because then things will be things at work will get jinxed. Oh, I don't want to make bets on what's going to go wrong next week. Um, Lola, I'm just happy that you saw my side of socks. Happy? Yes, I did. Um, that is at the start. Like you're doing, you're, you're powering along on those socks. Um, so I've been having some a couple of people picking up their orders from Fiverific and things like that. And I'm looking at just so that you all know. As a bit of a heads up, I'm looking at the last Sunday in November for the open day here at Fiberific. I've just got to double check a couple of little things to make sure it's all good and then go from there. So um, save the date, is that what we say? Save the date for the last Sunday of November. I'm thinking started around um, 10 or 11, not too early. And we'll come and have fun. It's going to be a bit of a de-stashing some stuff, selling some, um, I've got a couple of spinning wheels here that are X-Demo wheels that I'm going to be selling on, lots of fluff, old magazines, so even some stuff out of my personal stash that I just don't use. Um, dang, busy that week plus flying is an issue. Yeah, you might be a smidge far. Uh, yeah, you might be a tad out of the way, um, which is a shame because it would be great if you live closer. Um, Joss is popping in the date, so the 26th Joss, is that right? So I've just, I've still got to double check some bits and pieces, um, and so that I can, so that I can do that, but I, I don't want to do it any later because then it's after my knee surgery and I really don't know how it's going to go. So yeah, so the 26th, so I'll, I'll double check that. Now the thing to remember is with this particular live stream, um, because it is through my phone, uh, the comments won't be saved in the video. So um, just to let you know so that, you know, I'll, if you write naughty things, I'll just try to ignore them. It's very, very hard. I find it very difficult to ignore the funny comments um, and go from there. Um, oops, hello. So yeah, so when, I've only got two more of the little tufties, the nests, I call them. I, there's probably a proper term. That's the thing for me is like I hear people say, oh, you know, you should do this and you should do that. But the thing is, I do them and I can sort of teach them. But I don't know the proper words for a lot of things. It's like the doobie whacker and the, the thingy and the nests like these. I call them nests and stuff like that. So um, for those of you that weren't here in the first minute or two, uh, I've got today's prizes will be a set of blinglets and a these are the medium blinglets in Peacock, which... Just hang on, there we go. Medium blink, let's see, peacock. There we go, I'm just trying to block out some of the light. Um, anyway, and also a green Notions case, so they go together. And then we have a beautiful skein of sunflower sock yarn in a one of a kind, literally one of a kind color. Um, so, oops, helps if I put it up to the camera. So it's kind of like, um, it's probably less blue than what the camera is showing there. It's a bit, it's very green. It's a very green one. I really like it actually. And that's why it has not been named. Um, and because I was, I was going to keep it, but I've decided not to because I went through my stash. But that was, that was stupid. I don't know why I did that. That was just, that was just asking for horror and disappointment because stuff that I thought was business stuff turned out to be personal stash. And I was just like, mm-hmm, yep, okay. So those three crates aren't coming over to Fiberific because they're mine. Um, my cat princess loves you. She heard your voice and came running and promptly tried to headbutt the iPad out of my hands. Oh my God, that's so cool. I like that, like cat whisperer. My, my cats, um, they love me when I have the cat food. And that's about it. And, and Tibbles loves me when I have my hand on a door handle because he always wants to go in or out or in or out or in or out. He doesn't like to stay in. Um, Jazzy loves me uh, when I'm giving her pats. 
but only in the one section and for one like literal like scratch and then I have to take my hand away or she will bite me. So I'm glad your cat likes me. <laughs> it could also be because I, 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 you know, do things that I know annoys my cats. Like, um, I poke them. What are you doing? Why are you looking at that? And then if they've got their paw on something, I take it away because oh, I want them to chase me, but they don't. Oh no, Tootie Lady is here, Rainbow Express. So um, I brought, I stopped in at Aldi and picked up some supplies because I quite often um, make myself like a little bit of a light lunch here, like crackers and cheese or something like that. And then the day before yesterday, I realized I had the cheese, had no crackers. And I didn't have any of the stuff I normally have. I had, I could make coffee, that, that was it. So I was just like, oh my God, so I had to buy lunch from the van. And I was starving hungry. So I got this, this thing, I don't know what it was, but it was good. It tasted very fresh, I can tell you that right now, which, you know, surprised me if any of you have heard any of my descriptions of these trucks before. Um, so yeah, so I, it's harder for me to keep an eye on the time. I can see it at a time that I've been running. Actually, I've got, oh, no, I can't see the clock. But that's right, so I can see the time that I've been running rather than the actual physical time, so I can keep an eye on it that way. Um, so yeah, so this bobbin is nearly full. So I brought in um, my jumbo flyer and also my jumbo wooden, wooden bobbin um, because I'm tossing up whether or not, I might bring it over, hang on, you ready? You're gonna move. Do, 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 getting closer to the fiber. There we go. I'm tossing up whether or not to ply this with something. It's not focusing, I'm sorry guys. Um, or whether or not to leave it as a single. Back over to your spot. Um, so yeah, so I haven't decided, but I brought the stuff in just in case I decide to ply it. Um, there's a pretty decent chance that if I do ply it, it will be just with some fine undyed silk yarn. Um, and then I'll give it a, a wash. Um, such a pretty blend of colors. Yeah, this is um, this is one of the Janet Day bats. She is amazing with color, honestly. Um, if I could do half as well as she does with the fiber, fiber dyeing and fiber color, that, that's pretty well why I don't dye fiber um, because I am so terrified of felting it and ruining it that I just don't do it. Um, I tend to spin it and then dye it if I'm gonna dye yarn that's spun. Um, and if it's um, undyed, just, I mean, and I've, I've dyed fiber and I've dyed it successfully, but only in very, very, very small amounts, which doesn't make sense sort of in a commercial scale. And, and by small amounts, I mean 200 grams. Um, oh, no, no, 100 grams, it was 250 gram batches. Um, which, yeah, it just doesn't, that's not, it's not enough. It's just not enough. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's been a weird day. My whole brain is a bit like everything. Yeah, everything's off. Um, I haven't been sleeping well. Cause is it just me? Like, if, like there's other Brisbaneites in here, but it has, has the weather been weird? Like at night, like it just feels hot, even though there's a nice breeze, but we don't always get it in our room. So we've been having to put the air con on which feels so stupid because it's not that hot, but we're just waking up like feeling all yucky. Like we just decided the other night, Tim and I like, and cause you know, we don't, we, neither of us like sleeping in air conditioning. So it's not something we prefer. Oh, it's freezing in Melbs last night and Vanessa was cold last night. Gosh, we had the air con on last night and I still woke up hot at one stage. It's weird. Uh, maybe it's just me that's weird. It's getting cold where Tara is. Yeah, you guys are coming into winter. But previously was also hot. Yes, it's, it's, it's a hinky time of the year. We've got some most amazing grey clouds at the moment. I love grey clouds. I've got a thing about grey clouds. I love, I think I have a thing about grey. I didn't realise until earlier this year how much of a thing I have about grey. Um, but I love the, the colour changes in the tone in grey storm clouds. Well, these aren't. These are potentially storm clouds, or maybe just rain clouds. Um, typing one-handed due to pumping. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I appreciate you typing at all. 
Um, you've got a whole other job on your hands right now, which I think is so exciting. Um, I'm going to have some coffee. Hang on. Okay, so I'm ready to join up my next little bit. Let me look at the time here. So in about 10 minutes, we'll give away the blinglets and the notions case. So do you guys have any questions for me? It's like, I quite often ask you questions, but what questions, like, do you have any questions you want to ask? So far away, I'm in that kind of mood today. So hang on, I've got to move my do Doobie Watson. Sliding flyer. See, I know the name of that one. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you've got any questions. Hey Marion, how are you going? Um, you haven't missed any prizes, Marion, we're giving away in about 10 minutes or thereabouts. Um, so yeah, so if you've got any questions for me, that would be really cool if, if I can answer them. Hi, did I miss you? I totally missed you. So, you know, it's, what happened? Did you book an appointment over our session today? Because that's wrong. Um, I'm going to have to find some sort of um, copyright free music I can play in the background of these videos. Because sometimes I sit here and it feels like I'm like talking to myself a little bit. I know I'm not. Um, I'm at eye casualty in the PA. What happened? I've been in there. That's not a fun place to be. Gosh. It's never the same without Kim. No, it's not. It's totally not. Um, yeah, it's, she, she adds, a, I've got a weird spot on my eyeball. Oh, I'm way ahead in the prize department. Fair enough, Marion. Um, well, I hope they sort it out and it's nothing bad. Do you have a friend that plays music? I have a brother that plays music, but I don't think we'd like the kind of music he plays. Um, yeah, I hope I hope it'll get sorted out, Kim. Can you message me and let me know later if if you want to talk about it? Um, so yeah, so this bat from Janet Day. Um, someone suggested that I weave it, and I'm seriously considering that. Who was it? It was probably Kim. Um, and I'm seriously considering weaving this rather than knitting it. Um, I wouldn't crochet it because it's a bit too thick and thin and slubby and stuff. Maybe even knock out the wave shuttle and have a play. I haven't played with the wave shuttle yet. So actually, I haven't woven. When was the last time I actually wove anything? It's got to be three years at least. Um, well, you know, I have big arms, but I think the camera on this angle is making my arm look even bigger. So way to go, you know, self image. I'm just going to move. <laughs> Because, no, it doesn't make any difference. I don't care. I'm going to stay over here. I'm just staying over here because, yeah, I looked and realised it was, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, dear. Oh, you guys probably know that I stress out a little bit in, in groups of people and in crowds and stuff. Nothing too dramatic, but just enough that I notice it and get a little bit panicky. Um... The chairs yesterday at this thing were so close together. Um, <laughs> uh, that I'm not kidding. I had to sit like I was on the aisle because I put myself on the aisle so my knee I could straighten and move my leg without harassing anybody, which I needed to be able to do. Um, but the chair next to me, the guy, you know what guys like? They like to sit with their legs, you know, in different postcodes, and so. I'm not, I had to like fully move, um, hang on, Kim's got, I'm sure it's fine, but it never pays to mess around when it's your eyes, I've seen the, the triage doctor now, oh, hang on, stop that, I've seen the triage doctor now just waiting for the doctor, said maybe two hours, oh gosh, well, I hope it's alright, honestly, um, yeah, but yeah, so, and I'm sitting there and it was just like, this over, like, because there were 1,500 people in the room and it was this overwhelming smell of BO. And it was not, it wasn't terrible BO, but it was noticeable. And I'm like, oh my God, 
I just can't deal with this. I couldn't. There was so many people. So instead of staying for the whole event, I just sort of stayed until after Gary Vaynerchuk did his thing. And then I was out of there because I was just like, do you know what? I bought the ticket because he was going to be there. Um, annoying to wait, but right thing to get your eye checked with Kim. Can you still craft while you wait? Oops. Um, Kim says, obviously, it's not a big deal that needs immediate attention. Yeah. Um, Nikki Vicky says, long, my cold meds are kicking in. I'm going to bed, but I tagged you in a video on Instagram of Princess watching you. Um, <laughs> thanks. Knitting muscles, for sure. Oh, yeah. And BO. I just, it's one of those things. There's many a smell I can deal with, but BO and dead lizards. Nope. Can't cope. Um, oh, last night. Like, so, so. Talking about jumping around and being all hypo. Last night I was watching telly and um, Abby, we got the, okay, start from the start. Abby got some new chickens to go out in the back and um, she's named them Cake and, and Polly. Polly? Yeah. Cake and Polly to go with Finn, who already have. And, um, but Cake and Polly have taken to going to bed on, um, I've got a little, uh, planter box outside of my kitchen window and they've taken a climb on that at night and so Abby each night picks them up one by one and carries them up to the chook pen and puts them in the chook pen. Well last night Abby's come in an absolute shaking quivering mess and I'm like oh my god what's happened are you okay and she was like I went to put cake away and and there was this massive spider and I swear it was this big and it was so huge but I still put cake in so I had to lean over the spider to put cake to bed but I couldn't because I couldn't leave her out by herself but I, I think I could ever go in the chook pen again and I was like oh my god like I probably would have code brown dropped the chicken and ran but she didn't she fully kept just put the chook back where it goes so I was just like wow that's like dedication to your pets right there because she loves Cake and Polly. They follow around the yard. So, yeah. <laughs> Nat says different postcodes. Totally going to use that one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, Abby and her chickens is quite funny. So, the chickens pretty much... We've just got a suburban-sized block, but we're allowed to have some chickens here. Um, unfortunately, I have a Bible study today. Oh, hang on. See you next week, Kim. I hope you're over. See you later, Tara. Have fun. Um, anyway, so, yeah, sidetracked, but yeah, Abby and her chickens, see, so, you know, so when she screams at the side of a daddy long legs now, I'll be like, well, you put it, you can carry a chicken over the top of a massive huntsman, why can't you deal with a daddy long legs? Um, I've got no idea what you guys want to talk about today. I am kafrazzled and kafuffled because my tech is not working and I've got this terrible, horrible feeling that I'm gonna to have to buy a new laptop and I'm really not in a position to and I yeah I'm just in a bit bit stressed out um, oh yeah I'm totally sure she got the phobia from me which because I, Tim says I can fly when there's a spider or a snake I can apparently fly and levitate out of the room that they're in um, I become an absolute mess and look I've got I think I've got good reason to not like them so but yeah, um, uh, you know, the, the, most fears and stuff I've tried to keep in check um, when Abby's around just so she doesn't get my fears um, because I know they're irrational and I know that there's no reason for some of them. But with the spiders, I just can't. I just cannot. My heart ends up in my throat. I can't hear anything because my blood's pumping so hard. So... Um, Kim says, I always try to put a brave face. Um, yeah, so when it comes to spiders or things that fly at me, I just, I can't. And Abby understands that. And I, like, she's not so weirded out by the things that fly at her, which is good because I explained to her that it's because I can't track the movement that fast. So, because my, um, because of my vision problems. Um, so, yeah, it's just one of those things. I'm going to just slide this this way. We, I'm going to squish this onto this bobbin. I'm not getting a second bobbin just for like a little bit. I'll be like, even if I have to manually ride it on. My kids name the huntsman. My kids name the huntsman in our house. Oh my gosh. We, we yell Tim and he takes him outside for us. 
because he's not afraid. He'll literally pick him up with a tissue and take him outside. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, huntsmen, if, if they're around, they drown. Um, the kids in Maddie's class were freaking out over a ladybug the other week. It was a bit extreme. Yeah, see, Abby will pick up ladybugs. She'll pick up most things, not spiders. She loves lizards. So she's always keeping an eye out to try and grab lizards and things like that. Um, and she loves ladybugs, although I have warned her about the orangey yellow ladybugs versus the red ones. Um, and we use a magnifying glass and go out and check out the lady, ladybug babies, the larvae, eating all the, um, eating all the aphids on the roses. She loves that. I love my spiders. I scold the huntsman spiders for not eating all the silverfish. Totally. Sarah, I need your address. Um, I don't. I ha didn't receive any emails or anything to send out your prize. So, um, I, I, yeah. So that would be good, and then I can get your prize out as well. I've got a couple of people's prizes here. I've got one prize, and I have to make a confession. I don't know who it's for. I've got it packed away. I've got it all sorted out, and it was the undyed tadpole silk. So. I'm going to have to go through some feeds and work out which episode I gave it away in and find out who it's for. I feel terrible and bad. Hang on, the messages went away. Oh, Sarah says, I forgot I got distracted. Don't we all? Um, my friend has this weird arm thingy that you use to pick up spiders to take them outside. Yep. Oh, Kim says, oh, that was for me. I don't know if I believe you, Kim. Um, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I'm gonna to have to watch back some videos now um, because I'm just, I just don't know. Like it probably is, like it could well be, but I got no idea. Oh dear. Um, hang on, I got a lumpy bit. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, wasn't it Marie's? No, M Marie's got something else. She's got uh, knitting needles or something. Marie's stuff's still here too. Um, yeah. She won something a while back. Yeah, yeah, I've got her stuff there. Oh, hang on, stop that. Come back here, you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh no, it, it disconnected. I have to join it back on. Uh, Casey here. Oh, I think her stuff went out as well. Anyway, I'll go through the videos and I'll check out um what's what but um because I, I posted a whole pile of stuff the other week this afternoon i've got blinglet making to happen i've got a few more of the small in um dark crystal to make up i want that wheel as a prize i'm totally not giving you my wheel this is my baby you cannot have it it is mine you will have to fight me for it well, you could just order one. It'd be less. Hey, Casey. Ha Casey, is it Kachia? Casey here. How you going? Um, we were just talking about, I've got a prize here that I'm trying to work out who it was for, and that's why your name came up. We weren't just, you know, ear bashing you or anything. Um, what about the wheel on the table? That's my little gem. That's my first ever purchased wheel. And it has got a little issue, so I've got to send a part back to Margecraft to get fixed up. I was going to fix it up, but it's, and I could totally do it, but I just don't want to do it. So I'm just going to post it back to Margecraft. The ball bearing inside has been damaged, and so it makes way too much noise for my liking. Um, so they're going to fix it up for me and send it back. So I just need to send the little, this little bit. Hang on. I've just got to post this bit back, so yeah. Um, I feel like my friends are monopolising your prize draws. They totally are. I'll you one um, garment wash, because I thought I'd posted yours off in a box. Has it arrived is a good question. It should have arrived by now. Um, I know that we're still, Vicky's still waiting on her prize to arrive, which I would have thought it would have been there by now too, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes Australia Post. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Um, 
No, I'm cool. I'm cool with the prizes and the people who are getting them and stuff. Um, if one of the things that's going to happen in this changeover that I'll be doing is I'll be reshuffling where the prizes get given away and how and things like that. Um, I think I'd actually already posted it before you were there, Kim, just so you know. But yeah, so with all the shuffling around that's going to happen, the replanning of the videos and the and the um, and all the sort of bits and pieces that I'm trying to add in uh, and get videos made, which has not been happening. Like I haven't been doing any tutorials just because I'm trying to keep up with some other stuff right now. So yeah, it's it's all coming and it's all happening, and I'm very excited about the whole lot. Um, oh, there we go. Move the Doobie Watts, Firehawk, HQ looks fab. Oh, look, I really love coming here um, to the point where I nearly came in on the weekend because I wanted to get some little jobs done and then I was like, you know what, I need a break. I won't go in. Um, and it was because I was feeling guilty about yesterday is what it was. And yesterday afternoon, I nearly ended up coming to HQ to sort some stuff out and I was like, you know how long it's been since I've had an early day? So... Um, the open day is going to be, we're, we, we are at this stage, um, uh, what did we call it again? Saving the date of the 26th of November, um, just to, to, for the end of November. So that's the weekend before I get my knee surgery done. So I can, you know, get around and move things and have a good time. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll sort all that out. We'll get it all done. I've got lots and lots of magazines and fiber and yarn and and all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff that I'm just finding. And I'm like, oh my god. So there'll be stuff that's de stash prices and stuff that like. But I'll have like a table of other stuff that's not de stashed. Um, make sure you do a fi yeah. I will. I've just got to confirm the date. And then once I've confirmed the date, which should be done by the end of this week. I will um, do a event and plug it everywhere because it'll be fun. I'm going to set up my little marquee outside so that we don't all have to squish inside. Um, there's like, you know, the little veranda area. We can all sit out there if people want to bring their wheels and do their own craft as well. So there's lots of lots of space. There'll be space. Although we'll, I'll probably make everyone park on the road, even me, um, just so that we don't have vehicles coming in and out of here as well so we can all hang out. Um, I bring my camp chair. Good call. That's a good call because chairs are at a premium here. Um, or at least chairs that I'm not worried about people falling out of anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. I'm nearly finished this little piece. Once I've finished, I'm going to be giving away the blinglets. Now before I asked, which I've, I have to confess, I didn't see any posts. But I asked, what is a go-to book that's a resource book for you, whether it's a pattern book or, or how to do something book, like an actual Dead Tree Edition book um, that you like to use, that you always seem to turn to when you need advice or help or inspiration. And that will be, I'll have a read through that, and it will be the, win the winner will get this prize. Respect the Spindle. That's such a great book. I really love that book. And I love the video, that the interweave video that came out with it as well. I love Abby Frankenmont. I think she's great. Um, Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns. That's a good book. Is that, that one's, oh, who's that? That's, is that Anne Bud? I'm not sure. It might, oh, yeah, I could be wrong. This is the last bit of fluff. Abby is an interesting person. Is that a book? I'm not sure. Okay, that was Anne Bud's book. That's cool. Um, oh, Abby as in Abby Frankemont, not as in Abby either of our daughters. No, it's all good. Um, Kim says, I don't tend to do dead tree books. I have heaps, but I tend to forget they're there. Just as I use YouTube all the time. Yeah, Abby Frankemont, yeah. Because us with all of our Abbies, it does get confusing, right? <laughs> oh dear um, yeah no I've, I've got so many books that's the thing and I've started moving away from Dead Tree Editions and moving into the Dil uh, Yarn Etec was it Yarn Etec Chore by Gillian Moreno 
the crochet insert, insert book or the knitting answer book. Kim says, I have heaps of stitch dictionaries. I love stitch dictionaries. I've got a whole pile of harmony guides and just heaps. And I've got the old harmony guides and the new ones. I love the harmony guides. Um, I'm going to be starting to, uh, you know how I've been doing the little, you know, Amazon links to the, the books and stuff as well, just so that you guys can see them. Um, 200 crochet blocks. I love Jan Eaton. Have you got that her edge book? I love the, the edge book as well. Dying to spin and knit by Felicia Lowe. I haven't seen that one. Um, or at least I don't think I have. Ah, oh, Edie Eichmann, of course, it's it is around the corners. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. And the edge book too, yeah. They, it's such a cool, that's cool edges. And I like the shape of the book, it's weird. Um, but yeah, so anyway, on Amazon, I've got a um, Amazon, it's called an influencers page, but basically it's a little vanity URL, it's amazon.com slash fiberific store or something like that, I can't remember it. And I can put all stuff that I like, I can curate like a page of stuff I like. So I'm totally gonna be adding in like our book suggestions and things like that in there. Um, and like the, the more the books that I talk about from week to week. Um, and then also I'll pop in a section on the tech that I use for my YouTube channel because I get I actually get that asked. I actually get asked that a fair bit, to be honest. Um, I find that a little weird, but anyway. Um, oh, I'd love that Felicia Blow book. Her crafts and class is awesome. I have the Kristen Omdahl edge books too. Finer something, something or something. A crochet so fine, I think it is. Oh, that, no, that might not be the edge book. Because I've got crochet so fine. I don't have an edge book of Kristen Omdahl's, I don't think. Anyway, I've got heaps of books. It's very sad how many books I have. Um, but I use them all the time. Yeah, crochet so fine is the pattern one. I don't have the edge one. Um, so let me have a scroll through and see who's going to win the little prize. The little prize is going to Vanessa Bovy. Vanessa, you are winning a Notions case and some stitch markers. So you might want to send me a postal address. Vanessa gets the um, Notions case. Oh, I've got a blue arrow. Um, yeah, so I hope you can use this sort of stuff. Because you knit, right? Yeah, you knit. So you'll be able to use these. So that's cool. I, I'll try to make it that if I know anything about the person, I try to make sure that it's something like I hate to give only a crochet of blinglets because I can't use them. Um, notions case and blinglets. And a little while, we'll give away the pretty yarn. Yummy yarn. So, um, yes. I'm so out of whack that I don't have my laptop because I would normally have shared it onto Facebook like while we were talking that this was on and stuff like that so I'm like hey front page tech what are you doing in here everyone say hi to John if it's John at front page tech it might be Brian but John and Brian run this amazing tech channel that cracks me up so much I watch it so often um, and I, I don't comment because I, I learnt the, the hard way to, um, yeah, don't comment or give your actual opinion. Oh, it it's it is John. Hi, John. How you going? So, um, yeah, we're spinning today, John, just so you know. I'm making yarn out of fluff. But, um, yeah, you guys have to go and check out Front Page Tech if you like funny current tech news. And I think John is a bit of a Nostradamus when it comes to things that are going to be coming out and happening. So keep an eye on their front page tech. They're awesome. And they had like some massive, massive growth and I'm not, well deserved growth, I might add. But yeah. So um, we're going to give away the yarn very soon. Does he hate Apple as much as you? I don't think he does. I think he just hates um, bad stuff like when something's promised and it doesn't deliver i don't think he's like i don't think he's an apple f sheep but he would have to answer that but i think he's run away now um well, i missed what happened to your surface pro my surface pro this morning was working fine 
And then I, I went to open up something to do something and it started screeching at me like, ah! and the screen froze. And so I had to do a hard reset on it, which is not normally an issue. I've done one before and it hasn't turned back on. I can't get it to turn on. Wait, you're making yarn like not making something out of it. Yeah, I'm totally making the yarn. So yeah. Um, HDD, oh God, I hope it's not a hard drive fail, Kim, because I will just cry if it's a freaking hard drive fail. Because I, yeah, it, but it's a solid state hard drive. They totally can fail, but they're less likely to. It's two years old, so yeah. Um, so yeah, John, so I'm making yarn. So I've got this fluff here. Here we go. It's just fluff, it's not spun. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be yarn. It's gonna be pretty yarn. See, look, I'll bring you close up, you ready? This spinning wheel, oops, there we go, is just a fancy twisting machine that makes yarn. It just adds twist into the fiber, which you can't see. So John, I'm running my live stream from my phone today. So, you know. Hi Cottage Keeper, how you go going? Um, might be a cooling fan, I'm hoping so, it was a bit warm. Um, the Fibrific channel and you and your peeps are talking about tech stuff, we love it. John, we talk about tech stuff every week. It's, we're a crazy, crazy bunch of people. We talk about monitors and RGB monitors and dodgy broken tech and all sorts of stuff. And the girls here have worked out that I don't like Apple. And if they have Apple questions, to not bother asking because I voice my opinion. Um, but yeah, no, a lot, of, a lot of the ladies in here are work in tech industry as well. So, um, and, and it's not always just ladies either. We get a couple of dudes, a couple of dudes every now and again. Um, I should bring my Lingcraft cakes and spin it on your wheel. Oh yeah, that's right, the game, the, the lack of um, NBN quality, Australia Post, <laughs> yeah, we talk about all sorts of stuff. And what, seriously, what's with those yarn cakes where they just hand you, oh, here's four strands of stuff held together, we can't be bothered applying it, so that's how we made it. And it's like, ah, I don't like it. Anyway, that's my opinion on that. Very scary. But um, yeah, it's, it's, the, the, the whole tech thing, I have to say though, you guys, this Optus um, 4G Wi-Fi that I use now in the office, it's really good. I'm really happy with it. It hasn't been, it hasn't, you know, do you know how I was worried about rain fade? Um, it's just, it, it hasn't really done it much. Like I'm getting way better upload speeds with this 4G Wi-Fi than I do with my cable internet at home. And so I'm pretty darn happy with it. You know, the, my download speeds at home are much better. I get about, I think, 35 to 38 megabits per second download. Um, and on this, I get about seven or eight. But at home, I'm capped at the one megabit per second upload. Whereas here, I get three to four, which, and, and even on occasion, five or six, which has been nice. Um, a perk, hang on. As a perk of being married to a tech hubby, he came home from packs with swag for me. Well, that's not fair. Where's my pack swag? It annoys me that the knots aren't flat though. Look, they don't even try. That's the thing. And it's so obvious and so blatant that they're not even trying. They're just like, it's just an overhand clove hitch. That's it, it's done. You just shove a knot in, joined it up. And I've noticed they're not even doing decent proper color joins. Like it could just be random, which again, I don't like that either. I like to be able to plan the pooling. I like to be able to plan on the stuff because I'm like a serious control freak. So I like to have everything where I want it and not just, you know, ugh. anyway, I'm not going into that one. I, I bought a Karen cake for the first time. Um, hang on a second, Cottage Keeper has a question. If you hold two fingering weight yarns together, about what size do you think you get? Thanks so much. So two fingering weight yarns, that would be the equivalent to sort of a four ply. So if you're thinking of doubling it, you do get more. You don't get just the weight of the yarn doubled. So you wouldn't get an eight ply, you get a 10 ply, which is about a worsted weight because you, when you hold them together, 
but they're not plied together so they don't have the air squished out of them you'll have extra air gaps in it and the air does take up space so you consider do a swatch and check it but I would say at a guess without seeing which fingering weight yarn it's going to be about the equivalent of a worsted weight or thereabouts maybe a light worsted so that's but always swatch and test when it comes to that sort of stuff um, I remember when Lincraft actually had quality products. I don't. <laughs> when was that? That must have been a while ago. Because for a long time I was not anywhere near a Lincraft store at all. Um, I only had Spotlight. Um, and then I started shopping at Lincraft after they went into receivership and then slowly built back up again. So maybe that's when I started, and maybe that's when they started getting all the crap in. Oh, about 30 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I, do, I wasn't shopping then. Not, not on the craft stuff. Um, yeah. I remember, was that when Lincraft used to have really good fabric? Because I remember my mum used to take me to a store that had lots of good fabric. And it was always a bit pricey, but it was good. And that's what she always said. Like, sometimes you've just got to pay for the good stuff. Um, and that's just always the case. Sometimes you just, if you want the good stuff, you've just got to pay for it. It's not often that you can get the good stuff at a bargain. So it happens, but just not often. Um, so we're going to be giving away this lovely green yarn very soon, hand dyed by me, Super Smushy. Um, my mum's a dressmaker, and as a kid, the fabric was always really good. Not now. No, it's definitely not now. Um, that was Lincraft then, but not now. Yeah, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. No, Lincraft fabric now is, yeah, no. Um, my Lincraft still sells buttons and tubes, not those silly cards. Look, I'm, I got to think about buttons, right? I love buttons for a start. Let's just get that clear. I love buttons. I love cute buttons. Um, I don't like toggle buttons much, but that's just because I don't like toggle buttons. Um, but what bothers me is I know how I get buttons, right? I buy buttons in packs of 50 to 100 and I get them at a good price and I can sell five buttons for two dollars of bigger size buttons and still make a good profit and you know that's profit on my time of bagging them up or paying someone to bag them up for me and so I make a decent profit on those what I don't understand is how Lincraft and Spotlight can feel comfortable with charging four or five dollars for a button that's it's not a handcrafted button like if you're buying handcrafted buttons totally pay that for sure but these are the same mass-produced buttons that I'm buying and I just look at it and I said oh my god five cents a pack for every actually no I have I have a lady that does my buttons and if she finds out I had buttons and someone else did them she gets upset that lady being my mum my mum's a button tragic it's hilarious it's, it's so it cracks me up a lot same for the fabric. Yeah, you can totally get it yourself and source it. The same quality, it's the same stuff. You could probably even use the same codes and find it. And yeah, it it it, it does infuriate me. It totally infuriates me. Hey, I just realized something for you guys. Because you're on the phone rather than in the laptop, because the laptop is kaputskis, I can take you to the scanner and we can work out how many meters of this stuff we've got. Um, but you'll have to, I've got to empty the skein because I was winding sock yarn because someone's going to be doing some dyeing soon and needed some skeins made up. So we can head into the yarn room shortly because look, there's only this much, uh, shortly after our prize draw, we can, and then so you guys can guess at how many meters you think there is of this stuff and watch me cry when it snaps. <laughs> So yeah, so what we're going to do is I will sort that out. Yarn noms. Yeah, so it's, it is one of those things. Oh, hello, come back here, you. Fluffy, chunky yarn that we're going to weave up on a loom. I'll have to pull a loom out of storage. I don't have any out. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd just probably pop it in through it. I've got a rigid heddle, an Ashford 80 centimetre rigid heddle. I'll probably just set that up and do it on that. 
Um, I don't sell Ashford, I don't recommend Ashford, but sometimes Ashford's what you can afford, so that's what you buy. So yeah, that's, that's that. What I really want, I'll tell you what I really want, my dream loom is one of those Marja Craft um, ones with, the, like they, when they first designed their, um, the heddles with the, the dynamic heddle with all the different shaped holes that you can put in, I really like that. And I know Ashford have them now, but you know, I want the Marja Craft one because I like how they finish everything. My Ashford stuff just never seems finished. It just doesn't, it's because it's not finished. Oh, come here, you big lump of goop. I don't want you there. Um, yeah, it's just not finished and I don't like that. Uh, you could set it up for, oh, that's totally a great idea. I could totally set it up and let people just have a go with the, with the, for sure, that's a great idea. I'll get it set up and started to make sure, you know, I know what I'm talking about, because there's always that. Sometimes I'm just talking out my butt and I don't know. Um, actually, I don't do that very often. I try to be researched in what I talk about, but sometimes I'm not as researched as I would like to think. Hence the old uh, Chantel, you're doing your knit two together is wrong. That was embarrassing for me. I've been doing them that way forever. That was the way I was taught how to do them, and so that's what I thought they were until uh, someone said it, that's not how I do them, and then I started looking into it more, and I was mortal, mortified, totally mortified. And so now it's like I really have to concentrate when I'm doing them together. Uh, you should, it could totally be a fibre for you and community weaving project, for sure it could. That would look great. And we could have it set up on like a table in here. Oh Kim, it's fine. It's it was it was just I was embarrassed because I thought I knew what I was doing on that particular thing. And I was like, well, you do it this way and you do this and you do that, and then the next thing you know, I'm like, actually, maybe not. Maybe that's not how you do it, because you're wrong. Um so yeah, it's you know, I'm a human person. I stuff crap up all the time. That was just slightly more public than I'm used to, that's all. <laughs> oh dear so yeah so I'm going to go and touch my surface pro in a second um, we'll go and touch it together there's no knitting police that's true so as long as it works and you get the same result alternate knitting fact yes yes there's no knitting police that's right that's exactly right you guys there's no knitting police but, you know, it turns out that my stitch doesn't even look the same because I've been testing it out and looking at it. And, like, unless you're looking at it really closely, you don't notice it, but it's, it's missing a twist. So, knitting traditions, not rules, totally correct, you guys. You're all awesome. You know that. You're all super. So, yeah, I love it. But, yeah, it was just a bit like I thought I knew what I was doing and it was like one of those things that it's like a knit stitch it's all about consistency, yeah, and that's that's why I continued on and made sure I did it that way for the other sock and everything like that, so that they did match. Lots of different ways of doing something. Totally agree with you all, but I was just a bit, yeah. It's one of those things for sure. Oh dear, this is really not the most flattering angle for me. I just want to say, um, created a new technique is all. Yeah. No. It was just a straight out fail, I'm afraid. In my brain. My brain has put it into fail bucket. But when I have a fail, all it means is I go out and learn again. That's it. It's not devastating. It's not... Um, I mean, it was a bit mortifying at the time, but once I sort of was just like, you know what, Chantel? Yep, you stuffed it up. Learn how to do it and move on. And that's what I, that's, and that's what I try and do with pretty much everything. Because it's like, in this day and age, it's so good to be moderately proficient at a lot of things because we have access to so many good teaching tools that you've got to remember that the chances of you being or me the chance of me being really good at heaps and heaps of things is pretty damn low honestly there's so much stuff in this world to know and to understand that the chances of me you know no degree no formal no nothing past high school kind of person who has just had jobs where they teach you on the job. Um, yeah, it's 
It's one of those things that it's like, I'm surprised I know as much as I do. So, which is, it's kind of funny, like as someone who didn't go for higher education, I really like education. Um, you're too harsh on yourself. Nah, it's all good. I'm, I'm a, what do you call it? A realistic pessimist? No, realist. It's a realist. Yeah. Oh, geez, you guys, this is only just going to squish on. Hey, it's nearly, how much more have I got to go? Yeah, it's we're going to be at fun fun times soon if if it's not if I'm not careful. Um, what's in the t-shirt today? Oh, I'll show you in a sec. Hang on. It's my um, IT crowd t-shirt. I love the IT crowd. They're so good. We won't mention um, how old it's looking because I love this t-shirt so much that it's been through the wash probably more times than I'd care to care to say. Um, my new batch of t-shirts came in right. And I have to confess, I'm not that happy with like the make, the quality of the make has changed. And um, yeah, I just, there's a couple that are fine, but there's a couple that I'm just not happy about. There'll always be someone who knows more and always someone who knows less. Opportunities is all just a little secret from a former music teacher. I used to work a couple of weeks ahead of the students so I'd look proficient. Yeah, and that's, it's kind of like that. I do a lot of that, trying to just keep ahead, just to keep you guys, and and also myself. It's like it's like because I want to show you guys how to do something. Some things I've been doing for ages, and I show you those. But every now and again, I'm like, I learned this cool thing. Check it out, and I am literally days ahead of you. And so I yeah, and that's it. That's the thing. But isn't that I I've always found that's the best way to learn something is to teach it. And because I want to learn more of this stuff. So you guys are aware I'm not like, you know, I make no bones about the fact that I'm no Abby Frank Mont. Um, if you want the technical information, I'm totally not the teacher for that. I'm more about making sure you're doing something so you're enjoying it and that you're not in pain while you're doing it and things like that, rather than technical capabilities, especially when it comes to spinning. I don't teach spinning because I just do it for fun. Um, teaching is totally harder than learning. Oh, brilliant, love the IT crowd. Me too. Um, I was a better piano player when I was teaching. Yeah, and you know what? I was, when I was, when I was teaching Abby, because Abby has four more piano lessons, but she would get stuck, so I would go through with her. And she'd always be like, when did you learn how to play? And I'm like, <laughs> 10 minutes ago from your book. And you know, it's one of those things because um, it was there. I mean, I had, you know, no basic piano, but being able to do it with her at the same time and just trying to encourage her, that it really helps. It's a good thing. Um, and that's the same with the violin. Like, I'm, I can't play violin, but I can make it not screech. Does that make sense? Whenever I teach something, the first thing I say, this is how I do it. Yeah, and if you guys notice, that's what I say in just about every video. This is how I do this. It may not be the right way, but it's how I do it. Um, so yeah, so it's one of those, you know, it's fun. It's fun. So we are nearly, look at this, it's it. This is the end. We're nearly at the end, you guys. We're nearly there. And then we'll go and work out how many meters we've got. Uh, da -da -da -da, Cause then we'll need a bath and a bit of a tub swacking. So yeah, so that's how I'll actually treat this. What I'll do is I'll put it into a skein, work out how much I've got. Then I'll give it a bit of a, a light beating in the bathtub, um, just to full it together. <coughs> Excuse me, just um, because I haven't given it a lot of twist because I did want loftiness in it. Um, I mean, it's got enough twist to hold together, but having it just slightly fulled in the bath will help, especially some of these bigger sort of chunky bits that go through to help them keep their shape. Oh, I went the wrong way. Come back, you. Stop that. There we go. Add the twist back in that I took out. There we go. Get in there. Good, good, good. All right, yep, nothing to see here. So yeah, so it's, you know, we're, we're nearly at the end of the bat, finally. You know, you guys are so good at making me finish projects. It cracks me up. Like, seriously, how long had this bat been sitting there waiting to be spun after I had did the bat for the video? And then we did some the beginning of the spinning for one of these live videos. And then that was it. It sat and languished for ages. 
Um, was it 100 grams? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was just, I think it was just under. Um, I think, oh, hang on. Well, no, because once I scan it, I'll weigh it as well. And I'll write that all down too. Because that's something I like to do, which is not something I've always done, is I like to um, weigh, uh, what I do is I scan it off the bobbin, then I um, work out how many meters in the skein, then I weigh it, and then as I'm winding it into a ball to use it, I'll measure it again because when you wash a hand spun, it changes from before washing to after washing. And while I don't necessarily need to know how many meters I've got before I wash it, because technically that information is, you know, not needed, I, I'm just always curious about it. Curious about it. I'm going to try with 674 jelly beans and a towel. What? I don't know what that means. Um, where are we at time-wise? We we're at an hour, an hour and five, you guys, and we got it done. It is done, skis. So I will. I'll buy a vowel. Okay. Oh, sorry, because spinning is not your thing. It's nearly yarn. It's nearly yarn. Um. There we go, and we're nearly done. And I'm trying not to rush the end of it so that it's not ruinated because that would be sad. There we go. And la! It's all done. Woohoo! Okay. So I'm going to, um, we're going to move this shortly. Will you ply that? You know what? I'm not going to ply it. I was going to. I brought the jumbo flyer in, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to look. I'll show you this here. Hang on. See, I don't think it needs plying. I think it looks great, but I think it's totally a hundred grams. But I mean, yeah. But I love all the colours in it. So we're going to go and measure that um, and work out what we've got. I'm just trying to think. I'm going to have to build a thingy, a thingy madubi. Yay, good for you. Cory, hang on, I've missed some stuff here. Hang on, because I was too busy looking at my yarn. Oh, there's some yays and there's some woohoos. What is your opinion on the best breed of wool to spin? Look, I am not. I'm a Corrie, I like Corrie Dale Cross is what I like. Um, I like the texture of it. I like that it's soft enough. Um, I don't think that Merino is always the best option, especially the fine Merinos. Like, I think they're pretty and I think they're great and I think you can make some gorgeous things out of it. But I also know for a fact that it will felt if you look at it sideways. Um, does the closest guess win the yarn? That's actually a fantastic idea, Kim. I'm stealing your idea. We're going now, we're gonna move. We're going to go and, ready? Disconnect the battery. Whoa. Oh no, oh no, stop that. I slid the thing and it hit the power button and oh my God, it was end of the world. Okay. We're moving out of the good light, everybody. Out of the good light, we're into the fiberific offices. You're going with 170 meters. So can someone write all these down for me, please? Hang on, I need a lazy cape. It looks like a great single. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a fantastic single. I'm just gonna flick a light on in this other office here. Okay, and also I need to plug in the skeiners if you want to run a comp. Yes, uh, that would be great, Kim. Um, but aren't you, you're not anywhere handy, are you? Can someone write these down for me, pretty please? Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna pop it over here, just for now, just while I tilt you up a bit. Hi, we're in a different room. So what we're gonna do here is, oops, there we go, oh, it's all bad. Everything's bad, it's on an angle, flashing you straight into the light. So I've got big cones of yarn and everything here, so I've just got to cut these and tie them off. Um, so you guys are having a guess, so yeah, so it's about 100 grams of um, fibre. It filled the bobbin, 
but it's not it's not heavily compact it's just full does that make sense um someone's and rides away excitement mounts <laughs> sorry why is the excitement right away i'm confused hang on but i've just got to empty this guy and then we can use it to measure everything so it's just going to take me a sec so this is a uh, sunflower sock yarn undyed. I get it in about four or five kilo cones and then I have to dye it. Well, I have to skein it and dye it because I don't dye it on cones because look. <sighs> There's one cone. Okay, one more to tie off here. Hang on a second guys, sorry. Alright, I need to tie off another end so it doesn't get tangled tangled. Yes, it's right, it's a thimble. The thimble of materials. Oh gosh, it was hilarious. Last night when I was on Chopper Green's live, uh, Instagram live, Daniel's jumped in and fully like head in the camera and started doing his thing again. Cue the music. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was just like, oh my god, Daniel. I'm in the middle of a live stream on someone else's stuff, mate. There oh, we go. Alrighty, sorry guys. If I had a thought and planned ahead, I would have emptied this off beforehand. Okay. So we're still doing... I have 11 entries at this moment, but 9 watching. Um, someone else has just popped in an entry as well. This is empty. Step one done. Bring those through. Now, I like a 1.5 meter skein. Reset. Okay, so you guys coming over here? Where's the fun in pre planning exactly? So here I've got a program in our one meter skein, so we need to go to meters and then one and a half meters. I don't know if you can read the little screen. Save that. Okay, now, because it's on a bobbin, we need it to be in a lazy kate. So let's just quickly build a lazy kate. I love these Nancy's knickknacks tools. I only need one thing. So I've got the base and I only need one spike. So just one spike in. So it's just going to look like this. All right, yes, we're going to be finalizing the entries in a second. So I'm about to start the process, you guys. So we'll shut entries down to win the skein of green yarn very shortly. Now, just let me just double check. I thought I had some banging on the front door. So hang on one sec, I'll look. No, I'm just totally paranoid. Alrighty, you guys, so we're going to shut down the entries in five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Alright, so whoever's the closest without going over wins. Here we go. Oh, it's not measuring. Oh, gosh. Um, save. One, two, three. We have to add four and a half meters to whatever we do. No, it's still not working. Hang on. Mode. Just turn everything off. Sorry guys, I will unwind it so that we can have a clear shot.
Are you guys picking on me? Technology, yeah, I'm not having a good day with it, am I? Alright, no. There we go, now it's going to work. Alright. Okie dokie. Okay, we're going to start again. Since you're wearing an IT crouch, oh yeah, have you tried turning it off and on again? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Let's go. Oh, hello. Let's turn your power on. There we go. Hang on, I've got a snack. There we go. It's just going to go slow while we clear up the stuff I wound off. There we go. Alrighty, what was the lowest of the bids? It's all about the shirts. I'm going to tilt you guys down a bit so you can see what's going on. So it's running from the bobbin, through the guide, onto the skein, and the skein is measuring it. <sighs> so, alrighty. So can someone let me know what was the lowest bid? And I'll tell you when we hit that one. Because we're at 40 metres so far, so 170 was the lowest. Okay. Let's speed it up a little. Otherwise it could take a while. Hang on. There you go. It just jumped out of the sky. It's all good. It's all good. 170 to 490 is our range. Okay, Sarah, thank you. So I'm thinking I'm thinking it's going to be about 150 to 200, somewhere in there. I know, it's a huge range that I just said then, wasn't it? Okay, we're, we're about to hit the 100 metres. Gosh, this skein looks pretty though. And 14 now, entries now with Joss. Awesome. Spin and win. <laughs> Alrighty. Now the winner understands they're not getting this skein of yarn, right? They understand they're going to get the green sunflower sock that we've been showing off. I just want to clarify that because we're going to weave with this one of the um, Fibrific HQ Open Day. Oh, there we go. Stop doing that. We don't like that. All right, we're up to 148 so far. Still going. One sixty. All right, one seventy one. That one's out. It's more than one seventy. Spokey dokey, yeah, it does a bit. Okay, we've just hit 200 and we're still going. still going. Although we've got to be coming up soon, right? Attached, I've just got to unwind it from the thing. All right, it says 
262.5. You guys, so once I add on this other half meter, it'll be 263. So who's the closest without going over of 263? Here we go. Um... So who was the next one after Game of Widows? Because so under 260, but well under 263. Actually, I'm gonna use some thicker yarn on this. I have 223. Oh. Silly reset 270 480 223. I'm thinking the 223 is looking good. No, Anka had 245. Sarah says 248. It looks like Sarah, if you could confirm, but from what I can see, it looks like Sarah won. Sarah was the winner. Wow, what are the chances that the person who's running it for me ends up being the winner? Sarah, you have scored the green yarn. So congratulations and thank you for doing that and keeping an eye on everybody. That's brilliant. No, no, it was whoever was the closest without going over. So the Game of Widows went over. So because it was 263. So she only just missed out. All right, let me just get this into a skein. I'm just using up some of the lens of the gray yarns, actually. So congratulations, Sarah, you did fantastic. This skein looks so good, you guys. You can't see it because, you know, stuff. So just let me get it off and I'll wind it into a skein. Now obviously this will shrink when I wash it. Alright, we'll go back to the other room because it's got a bit of light. Alright. Dun 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 dun. Oh. Hang on. 263. I have to write that down. We have to weigh it. Yeah, it's because we all knit. We all had a fair idea that 100 grams of chunky yarn is not going to go super fast. Okay. I have a pen. I have pineapple. All righty. So. All right, 260. Three and it was a hundred and nine grams. So two sixty three meters at a hundred and nine grams. You thought you'd, uh, oh, I was trying really consciously hard to not do too many thin bits. Yeah. There we go. Done. I'm going over here. I was very tempted to grab a red snake off the bench and then remembered that I'm on camera and I don't like to eat on camera. <sighs> so, we're back in the room, back in the room, this is it. See this light's so much better, isn't it? This is the skein that we're going to weave. This is the skein that Sarah won. So I better write down that, I need to send that to Sarah. So Sarah has got the yarn too. Cool. So that's awesome. It does, it looks great. I'm so happy with how it's coming. I can't take any credit for these colors. This is totally, totally all Janet Day. This is her gorgeous bat and I love it so, so much. Yeah, it does, it, it does remind me of Sari Silk with the colors as well. Although for some reason I always think more red when I think Sari Silk, but the same vibrancy and same sort of temperature of the colors. So this is gonna be great. I'll take this home and give it a washer 
And then when I put it back on the skeiner and then wind it into the ball, I can re-measure it so that we can see how many meters we end up with. Um, I'm probably gonna pop some silk as the, as the warp, uh, just cause I have lots of silk. So and in like really good, strong, thin sort of amounts, good for that. What fibers does it have? Oh, I don't know. I totally have no idea. I lost the bag. Um, I have to, I'll have to go through the other video. There's another video where I was dizzing it and I sort of showed a picture of the label. And so that's all in that. So I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know at all. Um, I left my bobbin in the other room. Oh well. I can't do any more spinning because I've got no more fluff. So that's not fair. Uh, where scrummy fibres. Oh look, it does. It's, it's squishy and it's soft, but there's definitely um something strong in there like there's definitely a strong fiber i can feel it sort of coming through and that will be good that will be what holds it together when i whack the crap out of it in the bathtub i'm pretty sure you have plenty more fluff yes but but no <laughs> not here all my fluff is at home um we were actually looking because abby has her own fiber stash as well and when I sort of gutted her bedroom and turned it into a teenager's room, I just pulled so much stuff out of her room and it's just kind of dumped on the dining table or out in the back patio. Like I pulled fibrific out of the house, but then Abby is where all the fibrific stuff was. So we haven't actually noticed more tidy tidiness just yet because I haven't gotten around to sorting through all her stuff because some of it's really good and we're going to keep like all the Lego and everything like that. But then some of it's dodgeballs and it's totally going. Kim, one hour in, how's that weight going? <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep you entertained while you're waiting at the hospital. That's totally the reason for this live stream, is so Kim is not thinking about what she's got to do while she's at the hospital. If Kim all of a sudden disappears, we could totally understand why. Um, yeah, so, but we were going through Abby's fluff stash and I now worked out where a lot of, um, it, I used to I used to sell a lot of eggshell fibers like way back when the business very first started. Charlie was so like super super supportive, and even though um, even though she was like ridiculously as she is ridiculously busy, um, she would still manage to send me some stock at like a, a wholesale price so that I could put a little you know mark up, mark on it and and have the same prices as her so that we weren't competing against each other price wise because um, that's wrong. So, um, so yeah, so I would get all this stock in, like, and I would get like, you know, sort of 50, 50 braids of fiber and stuff. And as I'd be going through it and things like that, I would have marked off that everything's arrived and let Charlie know. But then when I would be packing it back into a bag, I'd be like, I could have sworn there were two of those. Oh, well, you know, I've marked the list off, everything's right. Um, and then what it was is I found this little gorgeous stash of bright rainbow stuff pretty well anything that was multicolored and bright it was like abby was just like that's mine 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 and so she was just like oh um uh these are my fibers um but if you really want the, the space then i suppose we could sell them at the d stash and but the bunny will be mine and i'm like okay no no, they will, I will, I will shoot, we'll have a discussion over it and we'll make it fair and equitable because also I'm going to make her come and help. So, you know, my daughter is a mercenary. So the best way to get her to help is to say, hey, Abby, hey, Abby, you want some dollars? What is that? Uh, that would be a bowbird. Bowbird's still the pretty things. Um, or they actually mostly still pretty blue things. Is there another bird that steals just general trinkets? There probably is. Um, yeah, it's a bowbird bird in Australia. So yeah, so today I'm gonna make small, more small blinglets because I haven't finished shipping everyone's orders. I've got to make um, my Service Pro work. I really want my Service Pro. What do I do? I have any? Yes, I do. You need another blue one. I'll have a look. I don't know if I've got any more blue. I've got a couple. I think it's mostly green and pink, but I'll have to have a look. Um, I have that issue with my Abbey and my Stitch Markets. Yeah, they want to be paid too much. 
um, tell her she can have the proceeds minus the wholesale costs that she never paid. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be good. That would totally be good. So yeah, so we're gonna have lots of fluff and lots of yarn and and stuff like that. Stuff and stuff and things. We're gonna have stuff and things. Um, and and tons and plenty. Tons. Of, was was it that he said in that video? Heaps and plenty. Heaps and plenty of of, of more more things. Heaps and plenty. So. Um, that's going to be my day today is trying to make my surface pro work without crying um that's going to be an effort in itself is to not cry if it doesn't work because i love that damn thing so much that i made it own. hang on i'm going to grab its case that i made for it hang on I love it so much that I made it this. It has its own double lined so that it's extra padded zipped case in one of my special, special Hulk and Marvel fabrics that I love so much. So I made it its own. Do you know how hard this was to make for someone who has zero sewing skills? Like I even, I even partially can't see it. But I even sort of partially quilted it down the squares of the, you know, like I, I, I put effort into it and it will only fit the Surface Pro. So that thing better work. Right? <laughs> anyway, on that note, ladies, I'm going to go and um, make another coffee because this one is cold and it's not good cold. Um, you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. And Kim, good luck with your appointment. And I hope that I don't leave you waiting much longer now that we're all going to run away and desert you. Um, I think that's it. That's pretty much it, right, guys? Any more questions for me before I run away and do some stuff? Because I feel guilty because I didn't get any work done yesterday either. Um, yeah, so good luck, everybody. See how, you, see how we're all running for next week. No doubt you'll see many messages of stress and tears in Facebook or Instagram, uh, you know, if, if it's dead, that sort of thing. Um, thanks again, Chantelle and Bye Five Ruffian. So bye, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.